So they, they survived the, the war, both of them, and uh, then my mother eventually started to work in Bielefeld. The family of my father was, they had, they had a big farm and they had uh, some houses and stuff and seeing that the, the country was taken away, that part of the country was taken away from Germany, they were expelled. They were just thrown out. They were said, you are Germans, we don't want you here, out. Now, my father was born in 1901. My mother's mother was born in 1901 as well. Actually, my father was born in March and my grandmother was born in June. So my father was a bit older than my grandmother. My father had started, after he reached Bielefeld, he had started to work uh, in his profession again and his profession was architect. And of course, after the war, architects were very sought for, uh, uh, for because, hey, the whole place had to rebuild. Actually, what my mother told me a lot of years uh, later, uh, after three weeks of them dating, he looked at her and said, I'm going to marry you. No, the baby is coming. So finally, somebody looked and they were like, flustered right there. Oh my God, oh my God, hold on, hold on. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and about two minutes later, shit. Yours truly flushed out and was born. But then on the 12th of Sep December, uh, 1956, my father got a stroke. And actually he did have two smaller strokes uh, previously. And this stroke eventually killed him. it's your girl Mel welcome back to my channel we are here with mommy <laughs> so our old intro it's another it story stay. time with mommy story time with mommy mommy but this is a whole new segment a whole new sequence sequence a whole new concept <laughs> just different so before you guys have known us to talk about mom's jamaican story time which was of her years and her experiences that she had here in jamaica but now those story times are over because we actually got to the year 2022 with a whopping 78 episodes i think yep so now you guys were still interested in hearing mommy's story so we are going into mommy's youthful days as in you know from birth or pre-birth even before jamaica years basically pre-birth until the jamaican years basically because you guys were interested in hearing all mm -hmm. of that so as usual me definitely no no not more than time that i didn't even exist i wasn't even a thought nothing at all well me neither at first <laughs> at first yeah but i'm talking about the whole yep. pre jamaica anyways so mommy is going to be taking over all of these story times because she's going to be the only one who can tell you guys stuff anyways no more help from nobody yes oh no more help from the, <laughs> me from, alone from yosh nikki me, my myself Yui. and i me okay. nobody <laughs> at all can help her no nope. <laughs> all right so mom take over all right let's uh, start with my hometown in Germany not no, not long but just to give you a few little information my hometown in Biele, uh, is Bielefeld in Germany and that town is pretty old it was founded in the year 1214 after Christ and um, basically it was a very important um, a lot of people would walk through our area them time or, or drive with horses and whatever else uh, horse uh, uh, buggies and stuff to uh, trade because it was like a standpoint between the more northern part of Germany going down to the southern, southern part of Germany so we would get a lot of tradesmen passing through so 
basically Bielefeld was founded them times and and I think it, it became pretty wealthy through that because uh, what we had as well was linen you know the fabrics linen it was basically produced around uh, our hometown we had big 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 fields because where we live is uh, there are a lot of flat areas and they planted the 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 plant for it and and then they would process it to have ready linen and then the people would come and pick it up in Bielefeld and br bring it all over Germany. So Bielefeld was a, a wealthy town in in the year 1250 about that our castle was started to be built. The castle actually you saw the castle one time uh, we we had a vlog about yes. it. Oh, um, in in our series and you saw that castle so that is from 1250 and it took a while to f uh, finish it until uh, I think it took about 200 years or something to finish it so That's my long. <laughs> that is long so my hometown basically was an industrial town later on uh, we were famous for const uh, 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 assembling bicycles making bicycles sewing machines and actually i don't know uh, who of you might know dr oetker because they have it in america now too dr oetker is actually uh from bielefeld he was a a pharmacist i think that's why the doctor and he started to make uh, custard powder that's what he became famous <laughs> with initially custard powder and it, he had his first factory in Bielefeld and, and now, like I say, he has, uh, de he, de he delivers worldwide. I've seen uh, Dr. Etka pizza in America, especially at Aldi, I think. And so I know it, he has expanded a lot. So you could say that uh, my hometown is had quite a few goods that were interesting from those times coming up and and uh, manufactured in the town directly and mind you Bielefeld is considered a small a small right now we are not a huge town like Hamburg yeah. or Be uh, Berlin or Munich also by far not right now Bielefeld I think has about 375,000 inhabitants which is nothing because if you look at Berlin I think Berlin has four or five million by now and, and Munich about <laughs> that as well so you can see it's not a real, real big town. And the area where we are, it's the Teutoburger Wald, which is a huge forest area. So right behind, we are we are not very high above sea level, basically. Mm. The center of Bielefeld is only 33 meters above sea level. But then we have our forest behind it, the Teutoburger Wald is like hilly, but not much, much, much higher neither. So basically, we are uh, uh, on a like a lowland town as well. So uh, after all these years, of course, let's go zips zoops up to the nineteen thirty nine to forty five years, which was the Second World War. Um, Bielefeld got destroyed immensely in the second world war there were, had been one big big uh, air raid uh, in 1941 and the next one in 1944 and it, it destroyed practically the entire center of my hometown so you must uh, you will show we will show a picture and so you can imagine the amount of damage and the amount of uh, work that had to be put into rebuilding even the center of the town now coming to my family my mother and her mother lived in Detmold which is about 30 kilometer from Bielefeld a small small town and that's where she grew up and and was working at the time and my grandmother actually uh, had been working her whole life through which was not quite usual at that point in time because most women would stay at home but my grandmother lost her husband when my mother was three years old actually she lost him in Argentina he was he was an 
uh, engineer and, and had a job there and the whole family was there and he suffocated in the bathtub because uh, the, the gas wasn't really turned on properly, it wasn't burning. So the CO2 came out, not CO2, uh, the carbon, what is it, carbon dioxide? Car carbon monoxide. Uh, monoxide, exact, Car carbon came out and practically fell asleep in the bathtub and died. So she had her little daughter, had to come back to Germany and started her, started to work and actually, eventually, when I was a little bit older already, she became the first female CEO of a health insurance in Germany because that was strictly a man position and she was the very first female manager of this uh, health insurance. So, I mean, I think she did a tremendous job there. Manager and or C? I think CEO she was like a, 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 a Verwaltungsdirektorin. It's very high position. She will look it up. It. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, they both uh, spent the World War II in, in Detmold. And to be honest, at, in those smaller places, uh, First of all, the damage wasn't all that bad, like in Bielefeld, only 30 kilometers away, but uh, also the information f uh, flood wasn't all that much neither. So basically, I was when I was older, I started to ask my, my mother and grandmother, is how, how could all this happen in World War II? How all these Jews could be deported and killed? And they told me, they said, honestly, we heard rumors but it was always uh, put down as rumors and we, they, we, we never got any form of uh, information to the extent that we could say, oh wow, it's true, you know. So basically in a lot of smaller places in Germany, not in the big towns of course, but in where we came from, we're really in oblivion to a big degree. So they, they survived the, the war, both of them, and uh, then my mother eventually started to work in Bielefeld. And then I think she was commuting every day with a train or something. Now my father's side, my father's family came from, it was at the time called East Prussia, Ostpreußen. Uh, it belonged to Germany, which after the war, it was taken away from Germany and, and um, connected with Poland. So up to this day, it's in Poland where my father's family came from, although at that time it was Germany. At that time, the t town was Königsberg and it is now Kaliningrad in Poland. Now, when the war was finished, the family of my father was, they had, they had a big farm and they had uh, some houses and stuff and seeing that the, the country was taken away, that part of the country was taken away from Germany, they were expelled. They were just thrown out. They were said, you are Germans, we don't want you here, out. So what they did, packed their little few belongings that they could carry and walked from Kaliningrad, from Königsberg, to our part of Germany. I don't know how many hun hundreds of kilometers that was, but they walked. It took them a good while. The entire family, like my father, his brother, their wives, their children, and they walked the whole way down with a lot of other people. And those treks were kind of famous at the time because they, they had to stop at places and beg for food and... and uh, a lot of them died on the way because especially when you had to walk in winter and it was cold and they had to sleep outside they would freeze to death and stuff like that so it was really a very dramatic time <clears throat> but this family made it they made it to Bielefeld as well and I don't know why I have no idea but they kind of decided to settle there that was like in about 46 1946 47 now, my father was born in 1901. My mother's mother was born in 1901 as well. Actually, my father was born in March and my grandmother was born in June. So, 
my father was a bit older than my grandmother and when they reached Bielefeld uh, and, and settled down and stuff it turned out that the, him and his wife couldn't get along any longer so they got divorced right and he had uh, one two three children with her and one girl and two boys and uh, so basically that family fell apart now at that time my mother uh, who was born in 1928 uh, was in Bielefeld working and I don't quite remember how they met but I think they met in the insurance place actually my father had started after he reached Bielefeld he had started to work uh, in his profession again and his profession was architect and of course after the war architects were very sought for uh, uh, for because hey the whole place had to rebuild and they needed people to make plans and draw them and take care of the building process and so on. So he kind of started to, to take off well in his profession again and, and uh, doing a tremendous job. And so I guess he went to the insurance one day to get insured or uh, something where my mother was working. And they met that's how they met and they started to date although he was so much older than my mother but uh, he, he was like a very charismatic man i ha i can only s tell from what i heard you will know later why so actually what my mother told me a lot of years uh, later uh, after three weeks of them dating he looked at her and said i'm going to marry you just like that, not even like, would you like to marry me or nothing else. I'm going to marry you. <laughs> <coughs> and so, said, so done. And uh, of course, his side of the family wasn't too flattered that he was going to marry uh, such a young lady. Because, I mean, their, their age difference was 27 years or 28 years even. And ha seeing that he had a previous family already, they weren't not all that happy about this whole situation so basically still the, the the children would visit their father and and uh have some time spend some time together and stuff so at the time when they were still um engaged my father got the uh how you call it uh auftrag the contract the contract to build one house right in the middle of smack in the middle of Bielefeld and uh, that's what he did he, he, he drew the plans he, he, he did whatever was necessary and he was a big fan of uh, the Bauhaus Bauhaus is in an art form if you want and an architectural form as well which basically was very uh, simple because remember before, like in the 1800s, 1900s, early 1900s, people used to build houses with a lot of fancy things and, and, and columns. And I mean, really looking very, uh, uh, with a lot of ornaments on them and stuff like that. So now Bauhaus was uh, the kind of building, it was very simple, square, natural, nothing, uh, fancy on it at all it was just like a lego house if you want <laughs> although lego houses nowadays they look different too <laughs> yeah. so he was a fan of that so of course he designed the house that he was uh, contracted to to do like that which was a, a complete novelty at those years i mean mind you we are talking now we are in 1954 already so that is nine years after the war was finished so uh well my my father and my mother eventually got married uh, it wasn't quite after three weeks it took a little bit longer and then uh, my mother found out she was pregnant so with with um moi. <laughs> So the nine months passed and within the nine months that house was finished building and my father decided to take one of the apartments it was two sides ten apartments in that house one side had smaller apartments the other side a little bigger apartments and at the time he was just 
starting to rebuild his career so he could only afford the smaller side and uh he said okay we are going to get this apartment for my family right now because baby on the way so let's do this so uh they they basically uh bought the apartment on with mortgage of course and then he they moved in and then uh one day my mother was highly pregnant already and was in the bathroom and suddenly her water broke and it's like oh baby is coming and uh, they rushed to the hospital and and then in the hospital because i mean uh, they asked when did the, did the water break do you have any contractions and so on and so on and she said yeah I have contractions yes but not that often and water broke then and then and so they took their time they said, all right, let's, re let's get you registered. And I think we do not have really a room available right right now. So you hold on a bit and wait. And after about 10 minutes, my mother said, mm -mm, the baby is coming. And they said, yeah, cool down. You have time. You know, don't worry yourself. And my mother said again, no, the baby is coming. So finally, somebody looked. And they were like flustered right there. Oh my god, oh my god, hold on, hold on. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and about two minutes later, shit, yours truly flushed out and was born. You know, and that was on the 1st of October 1955, uh, early in the morning. So my mother didn't obviously have such a hard labor with me. <laughs> she, I, I came out pretty quick. So that was very nice for her, I think. Um, and at that time, how they treated newborns was very, very, very rigid. I mean, it, if, if you think about it nowadays, it was awful. Basically, we were separated from the mother right away, uh, put in a room with other babies and only, only taken out every four hours to get fed. If we were bawling, if we were unhappy, if we were crying, if we were upset, whatever, nobody cared every four hours or else you know i mean nothing was done so my mother didn't stay there long but what happened she kind of was stressed out and couldn't breastfeed me it turned out it the the milk start didn't start to product uh properly produce, produce product uh, properly so uh she couldn't breastfeed me so we we reached home and and she bottle fed me and stuff and and same thing you know at that time when when babies were, were fed it's like oh now you have to sleep and they put them in a room by themselves you know and and kept everything calm around it you know they're very silent no i mean nowadays we are so 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 different with babies you know we say oh babies need to be active they need to be involved in the family they need to be involved in going outside because their brain synapses are uh, forming okay. and stuff like that so we encourage to have babies with everybody around no them time it was like almost like a solitary confinement for babies only basically when when and then you started to cry and they would let you cry mm -hmm. it was practically forbidden for a mother to pick up her child unless it was in after the four hours so can you imagine that was so so hard i mean of course i don't remember anymore but i i know that that was the rigid way of of growing babies at that point in time so when i was well my father was heavily in love with me because his youngest uh, little daughter, you know, all his other children were adults already because basically talking about age differences again, his oldest daughter was a little bit older than my mother. And my two brothers were a little bit younger than my mother, not much. So, uh, of course, having a new little baby and then a little girl as well. So apparently he was very much in love with me. So every time and, and after he came home from work, he, his first way, he would barely give my mother a kiss, you know, like her hello kiss, whatever. Let's go to Sabina, you know, and boom, and they would play with me and take him time with me and have a good, good time. And so that was wonderful. Again, uh, unluckily, I do not remember anything of that, of course. But then on the 12th of Sep December, 
1956, my father got a stroke. And actually, he did have two smaller strokes uh, previously. And this stroke eventually killed him. So he was he was still alive for a few hours, but then he died on the 12th of December, same way. So that is how I lost my father. My mother, young as she was, lost her husband. And uh, yeah, that was a very tragic event, of course, for the entire family. And I will stop this story time with this information and we are going to go on from there next time yes guys so mommy is born <laughs> yay <laughs> mommy has arrived and um yeah you know very sadly within well after one year you were just one year old right because i was just December. one year old i was born 55 october 56 yeah. i was one year old so he December died in december 56. so i was barely over a year old that's why i don't remember at all you know yeah. i have no memory whatsoever of my daddy none so um yeah but that was basically how her father and you know mom came to Bielefeld and stuff like that so she's starting from scratch scratch yeah well y'all you know. <laughs> wanted the story so y'all get in the story you can get the Bielefeld birth of Bielefeld right <laughs> <laughs> so now you're getting everything all right guys but that is it for today's story time thank you guys so so much for checking out the video and we will see you guys next week Thursday for the continuation of what this lady here Did does before. with her <laughs> life. Because <laughs> she was an unruly little girl, let me tell you that. Hippie. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys in our next video. Bye. Bye. <laughs>